taking you all the way back to 1994. Nancy Kerrigan and Tanya Harding had their thing going on. Boys to Men wanted to make love to you. Ugh. And Dante Hicks wasn't even supposed to be there today. And we had an amazing lineup for games on the Super Nintendo. Now the NES 94, that was the swan song. That was, it's kind of going away. No more making games for the NES. Now they're focusing all their efforts on the Super Nintendo. That's good news for us because there was a lot of great games that came out for the Super Nintendo, especially in the later half of the year. The first half of the year, a lot of great games. Most of them are just good as rentals, but some great games on the Super Nintendo. We're going to cover a lot of them in this video. Not all of them. And if you haven't picked up your oddly specific air fresheners, I just stocked my shop. Like this one here that smells like a 1980s arcade. It's menthol cigarettes, wood paneling, a rusty gumball machine, and spilt coke. And this one was a huge hit at my last convention. It's Mommy's at Busy. It's a bubble bath, red wine, and a scented candle. Maybe an extra romance novel in there too, I don't know. The air fresheners, my homebrews, all available. RaidGames.com. You can check out a link in the description below. It's a great way to support the channel because these videos are free. And we're starting this list of games that came out for the Super Nintendo in 1994 with a game that stars me. And it may star you too, if you're feeling it. Lester the Unlikely. Well, this was a company taking a risk because so often games want to have you play as the mighty warrior from above, you know, the swords and the guns and the magic spells and all that too. This game you're playing as some dude, stereotypical geek, who's afraid of everything and that's what the game is about. You're on this island and you gotta figure it out. This game is a lot harder than anticipated. This game is also a lot longer of a game than I would have given it credit for. But the idea that, well, kinda like how Out of This World or Prince of Persia coming from that thing where it's like, it's a little bit more like climb up the platforms and a little less like action packed. There's some action in the game too, sure but not as much. It's more about the exploration of this game. And the fact that you play as some random dude tells you it's a story of the time. I remember renting this once or twice for sure. We had Mega Man X and I had a friend of mine in high school who swore up and down it was called Mega Man 10. I was like, no, it's, it's, it's Mega Man, but it's a spin-off. It's a side series. It's not like Mega Man's one, two, three, four, five and all that too, which I loved. This is a new version. It's like, hey, let's you know make it, you know, give new life into the Mega Man series by having Mega Man X and introducing new characters and stuff like that too. I was very loyal loyal to the original series. I was just like, Mega Man X, I don't know. I mean, I'll check it out with low expectations, but it won't be as good. And it turned out, not only was it, in most people's opinions, and a lot of people's opinions, it was better than the original series. Mega Man X is one of the best Mega Man games of all time. I'm getting choked up just talking about it. <laughs> Mega Man X rules. And if you haven't played Mega Man X for any reason, hopefully you've played it by now, but it was just another one. And, and, and there's been several of the Mega Man X games from there too, so props to Capcom for figuring that out. You ever check out Skyblazer? Skyblazer for the Super Nintendo? Well, I was a big fan of Hook of all games for the Super Nintendo. I loved Hook. I mean, they had it on Sega CD and stuff like that too. But Skyblazer, it's more of the same. It's from the same people, I believe. An excellent platformer. It's like a run and action style game. And it's great. And it came out uh, 1994 for the Super Nintendo. It's worth checking out for sure. You ever play Zool? Ninja of the Nth Dimension. Man, it gave me that European vibes. It reminded me a lot of like a, a James Pond if there was more action in a James Pond style game. I cannot tell you what that European style is, but boy, you know it when you see it. You sure do. Just the uh, bright colors, everything's animated, splatter. <laughs> there's, there's, for some reason, that happens a lot too. Yeah, it was worth a rental. It was from Game Tech. Game Tech, the company that usually brings you like game show games, made an action game, so why not? Flashback came out later in the year. It wasn't the sequel to Out of This World, but it was another like, hey, let's make this game that's like maybe a little bit less polish of the graphics, but man, the animation is everything in this game. And I was a huge fan of Flashback for the Super Nintendo until I saw it running on the Sega Genesis. And this is one of those instances where it does play better on the Sega Genesis than the Super Nintendo. However, the Super Nintendo version is just fine. It just runs a little slower. Ninja Warriors. Yeah, there's more than one Ninja Warrior. <laughs> Ninja Warriors came out in 94. I liked the arcade game okay. And then here's the Super Nintendo game. It's okay. It's, it's you know, Taito. You can never go wrong with the Taito game. I like the fact that the more you take damage in the game, the more it shows your robotic form on the inside, which I thought was kind of cool. They made two Terminator 2 games. That's how popular Terminator 2 was. The better one, the good one, is the arcade version called T2, the arcade game. Terminator 2, it's the, don't worry about that one. T2, the arcade game, that's the one you want to look out for. Awesome in the arcade, two player, that on rail shooter, first person shooter. You do not need a light gun. You can just use the D-pad and shoot everything that way too. I remember just having a lot of fun with this. I liked Operation Wolf and those style of games. They were great for just mindless fun. <laughs> you can't go wrong. Excalibur 
2097. Excalibur 2097. The future year of 2097. I say the future year. It's coming up in like 50 years or something like that. <laughs> it's not too far in the future than we think. But a very good game, I thought. It had the like the techno soundtrack where techno was like in Mortal Kombat and everything else. This game was a lot of fun. It had like two different slash buttons. So you had like a slash and a thrust with your sword. And you could also block with your sword too, which was really cool too. So there's a lot of sword technique, I suppose, in this game. Unlike a lot of other games where you just have a jump button and a slash your sword button, uh, this one actually gives you some uh, different options for slashing your sword, which was really cool. And I thought the game was really fun too. Claymates came out from Interplay. So we had, you know, like clay fighters where it's like, oh, we can make games, we can mold them in clay and then take pictures of them and then those will be the graphics for the end game thing. And Claymates came out too. It wasn't a fighting game. It was more just like a like a little kitty style platformer game too. But it was cool to see that they could do something like that where you could just like, Here's, here's a game made out of clay, digitized, playing on a Super Nintendo. Blew my mind for the moment. We also had Equinox, and I liked Equinox probably more than I should. I was a huge fan of Solstice for the NES. So we had Solstice, and then we have Equinox. So it's like a pseudo-sequel, maybe in a little bit way. It's that isometric view where you're just like jumping on floating blocks and stuff like that, too. I mean, I'm, I'm not selling the game, am I? <laughs> <laughs> but I remember having a lot of fun with this. At least it, it just, it looked unique enough for me to say, ooh, that's something different. NBA Jam came out in 94, and NBA Jam was that Super Nintendo game. It, it, was on all, it was on all the consoles, it was on everything, and great in the arcade too. But NBA Jam was that game that even non-sports fans loved playing it, including myself. I, I, you know, and again, I'm six foot five. I didn't play basketball because I have terrible depth perception. I learned later in life. I still could have played. I didn't have to shoot. I could have passed it to someone who could shoot. I don't need to shoot the ball, but that's another story for another time. NBA Jam, excellent game, mind blowing. Just the idea that it has like the teams on there too. Like you, know, you actually play as the the, you know, the Seattle SuperSonics and stuff like that too, or the Sonics, you know, great stuff. We got a home port of Wolfenstein 3D. Now again, 1994, not everyone had a home computer. Home computers were starting to become more and more popular. I had a friend who had one. I did not have one. I was still 100% into consoles. But man, I love Wolfenstein 3D. It's like, ooh, this is fun. You're just going around and shooting the bad guys. I'm only saying the bad guys because I don't know if the other word will actually demonetize me or <laughs> anything. Like, I don't get a strike or anything. Uh, but Wolfenstein 3D for me was like the, you know, paved the way for other games like Doom later, of course, and all these other ones too. But man, for me, it all started with Wolfenstein 3D. And I just like the fact that it's like, oh, it's a first person shooter, but you're walking around this huge map and you gotta go inside the doors and explore and everything. I thought it was really cool, especially for the time. Young Merlin came out and I thought that was a lot of fun too. I, I loved that Zelda style, fantasy style. And then Young Merlin, I don't know, I just had a cartoony twist to it where you could exchange an item for a different item that will get you farther onto the map where other enemies are. About a year ago, I went back to it and it's still pretty good. I liked it better then than I do now, but I still had a lot of fun with Young Merlin. It's a game I've never beaten still today, but boy, I played a lot of it. Super Metroid, my goodness. Um, Super Metroid, in my opinion, the best Metroid of all time. Out of all the Metroid, there's not, there's not a lot of Metroid. Right, so it's not much to go on, right? But Super Metroid, best soundtrack, best everything. Love, love, love me some Super Metroid. Me personally, I usually play a game once. I'll beat it. Cool, I played through it and now I'm moving on. I'm gonna play something else now. There's only a few games, like especially like old retro stuff that I'll play more, more, more than once. And Super Metroid was one of those games that even after I beat it, I didn't mind starting it over immediately to see if I can do better, to see if I can get the better ending, you know, or, or something like that. Super Metroid was just a wonderful experience and still, still fun today. It's, it's still an S tier game today. Capcom did something absolutely insane in April of 1992. They released King of Dragons and Knights of the Round in the same month. Both based on arcade games, they're both beat-em-ups. Well, not really beat-em-ups because you both have weapons in those. And both are very, very similar games. Yet they released them on the same month in the same year, similar games, and they both start with the letter K, which means nothing because it's like there's King of Dragons and Knights of the Round. And still to this day, I get them mixed up a little bit. I shouldn't have to because Knights of the Round, obviously you play as King Arthur or Lancelot or Percival. And then uh, King of Dragons is more, you know, do you wanna play as the cleric? Do you wanna play as the, the fighter? The, whatever the other, uh, you know, classes are, I suppose. But very, very similar games. And they're both excellent games. <laughs> they're, they're both really, really good. I remember renting one of them and then I saw the other one. I was like, didn't this just come out that I just played this? Wait a minute, what's this one? <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, two different games. But at the same time, it was crazy. The, again, they're both great. 
Mega Man Soccer was a unique opportunity, wasn't it? It was a way to say, hey, let's also use Mega Man in other games. Now, I was hoping for like a Mega Man, I mean, we could do Mega Man Soccer. Certainly we could do like a Mega Man River City Ransom style game or something like that. But you know, just the fact that they're gonna expand and say like, oh, here's another Mega Man game, but this time it's soccer. The other part of me was just like, well, if you're just gonna put all that time and effort into making a Mega Man game, just make another Mega Man game. You don't have to do a sports game, but you know, Nintendo was doing it, you know, forever. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's Mario Tennis, Mario, whatever. All right, Mega Man Soccer, why not? Now, Too Many Championship Wrestling came out in 1994, and nobody cared about it because it did not have the WWF logo for the time or the WCW logo for the time. Here's a generic Natsume Championship Wrestling. But me, not quite the intellectual because I wasn't keen on it yet, but I picked it up, I played it, and boy did I love this game. Simple style, simple controls. It was basically what we know now as the Fire Pro Wrestling controls where you have like your run button and then the weak, medium, strong buttons. And I didn't know it at the time, but it was All Japan Pro Wrestling with the names changed and everything like that too. So, you know, going back when I was like really into, when I started getting into like All Japan Pro Wrestling that I went back to Natsume Championship Wrestling. I was like, wait a minute. You know, that's, this is like, you know, you play as the guys. There's Misawa, there's uh, Kobashi, there's, um, you know, the Stan Hansen's in it, you know, things like that. It's like, come on. I mean, I knew who Stan Hansen was at the time, but not too many championship wrestling to me. As far as the US released wrestling games, it's probably my favorite wrestling game. I played a ton of like Royal Rumble and stuff like that too. But as far as a good wrestling game, it's, it's definitely one of my favorites. But I'm very remiss, and it's coming up next anyway. We gotta talk about Saturday Night Slam Masters. Now, Saturday Night Slam Masters, you take Capcom, who was already red hot with Street Fighter 2 and all that, and now let's make a wrestling game. This game is a fighting game that happens to have wrestling moves in it. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day. Is it a wrestling game? I don't know if I, I mean, yes, there's wrestling in it, but not quite like the wrestling style of game that we were used to for the time. But then the fact that you can play as Hagar in it from Final Fight, what a great crossover. I did love me some Saturday Night Slam Masters though, so happy to see it on the Super Nintendo, played wonderfully. And then we get Super Street Fighter 2. Now Capcom was just pumping out games left and right in 1994, and Super Street Fighter 2, they still didn't want to make Street Fighter 3 just yet. At the time, I was like, shut up, just make Street Fighter 3 and get it over with. But why would they do that when Street Fighter 2 was still selling a million copies a day? And this is one of those instances where somebody says like, oh, you know, DLC, you buy a game, you have to pay extra for extra characters and all that. What's up with that? I remember the day the game came out finished. I was like, yeah, me too. It's called Street Fighter 2. I bought Street Fighter 2. I bought Street Fighter 2 Turbo Edition. I bought Super Street Fighter 2. So instead of like downloading characters, I have to buy a brand new game every time. And Super Nintendo games at the time were like, 70 80 bucks <laughs> you know i'm not cheap i only have one birthday a year well it's more of the street fighter 2 they added four new characters the four characters were okay were they needed eh, happy to have them breath of fire came out i'm not the biggest fan of jrpgs but especially for the super nintendo i would at least look at them for a while and sometimes i'd even play them all the way through and beat them i was a big fan of the final fantasy games because i didn't feel like you needed as much grinding as you did like let's say the dragon warrior games and Breath of Fire was one of those games where I, I had no issues with it. I liked it quite a bit. I mean, I thought it was fine for being a turn-based RPG. Loved the music, and it was just something a little bit different, a little bit unique. Still a good story. Breath of Fire. It's good. I like it. Brain Lord came out, and I don't know why, but a lot of my friends never talked about it, never rented it, never did anything with it. I loved it. It was just that Zelda style, that three-quarter overhead view slash your sword, find the thing, go in the caves, do the dungeons. That was my number one favorite genre of video game. And in retrospect, probably of all time, sure. But especially for the time, give me more of that, as much of that as possible. And Brain Lord was such a great game. And you can jump. That's right, you can jump. You ever play fun in games? <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know I did. I loved Mario Paint more than I should have. My friends and I played Mario Paint all the time, and we would make all the naughty pictures and all the weird animations where we're chopping cats and have the music that goes with it. I don't know, just the dumbest things that high schoolers would do <laughs> with a game like Mario Paint at home. And fun in games, not as polished as Mario Paint, but the music did have sharps and flats, which Mario Paint did not, and it just was weird. It was fine. It was, I don't know, the, the, the title song still pops into my head every once in a while. Well, we get Tetris 2. 
interesting. It's like, I remember seeing Tetris too. I was like, how can you do a sequel to Tetris? It's Tetris. There's nothing else you can add to it. You cannot add any extra characters or any extra shapes to it because there's every combination possible already. Well, they did it by having the pieces kind of hover around it, kind of. <laughs> and it was more about like clearing out the little bomb flashy pieces than the other things, although the other things are also involved. I don't know. I like it, not as much as the original, but I, I still play it sometimes. Spider-Man and Venom, Maximum Carnage. This was cool. This was during a time we did not have the new Spider-Man movies yet. So all of these Spider-Man video games and Spider-Man media was still very much so based on just that comic 70s style soundtrack, big muscles on everyone and everything like that. That was still Spider-Man and I loved Spider-Man. And this game, it's a great beat em up. I liked that you can shoot your web to kind of capture the enemies, like grab them towards you and then beat them up that way. This was during, especially in that kind of mid nineties era with Spider-Man when it was like, Spider-Man was there too, but everybody loved, like Venom was the cool bad guy and Carnage was insane. Smart to add Venom to that because Venom was like the new hotness for the time. I remember playing a lot of Blackthorn too. Blackthorn, again, it's that hot style with like the out of this world, the flashback. And now here's Blackthorn and Blackthorn has a gun like a shotgun and so often do i hit the wrong button and end up shooting like one of the prisoners that i'm supposed to save <laughs> but i remember liking blackthorn just fine illusion of gaia what a great game that was too i remember the ours was called software etc that's what we had and if you pre-ordered illusion of gaia you got the free t-shirt and every once in a while at a convention i'll still see that t-shirt i was like ah cool they had that shirt uh, my brother-in-law did that because my brother-in-law was a big fan of uh, Super Nintendo games too. Illusion of Guy, a great game. It's a game I didn't quite get into until later in life, like literally probably 10 years ago or so. I didn't really play it back then for no reason other than just I was busy with doing other stuff or playing other games. I don't remember, but it's just a game that I didn't invest the time into. And I'm sorry I didn't, because Illusion of Gaia is, is an excellent, excellent, excellent game. Again, that style of game that I absolutely love, where you can like walk around and go to the town and fight the enemies and go in the dungeons and all that. Again, my style of game, I honestly don't have an excuse why I didn't play it back then. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Boy, oh boy, was that everywhere. All, all the, all the t-shirts and lunchboxes. And again, I was, that was late high school for me. I was aware of it. I watched it a couple of times, but it wasn't really my thing. My nephew loved it though. So he was the guy who kind of filled me in or I'd watch it with him or something like that. But the video games were always great. The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers games for the most part were always uh, pretty great. This is the first one. Side scrolling beat up, but it, you don't have like the, you can move around like you could like in a, a Streets of Rage or Final Fight. So it's just like 2D beat em up style. You can play as any of the five. And you, it's weird that you start off as just like you play as the kid and then later in the level then you transform and become super buff like why don't you just do that in the beginning but i don't know gonna add some personality to it i suppose but mighty morphin power rangers 94 it was fine mortal kombat 2 came around and this one boy oh boy did we play this one this was one of those that i probably rented so many times that first year i could have just bought a copy of it but i didn't have that much money at once i only got you know five bucks at a time here and there <laughs> but we played us a lot of mortal kombat 2. that was to me peak Mortal Kombat. Once Mortal Kombat 3 rolled around and then the other Mortal Kombat games, it, it started becoming, and you saw a, a tease of that with Mortal Kombat 2. It started becoming a parody of itself. It's like, okay, tone it down a little bit. I know you're having fun. You know, it's, you know, neat to put the developers in there too. I would too, if I could, but let's pull it back a little bit. But Mortal Kombat 2, to me, the best one. I remember renting Wild Snake just because it looked unique. And I did like Wild Snake puzzle style game. When the two of the same snake touch each other, then they disappear. Pile up the snakes, which is kind of gross, but kind of cool. And then you get those massive combos, like when they disappear, then the other two disappear, the other two disappear, they just start falling down and everything. Wild Snake's a great game. Final Fantasy III is what we played on the Super Nintendo. We probably know it best now as Final Fantasy VI, but at the time, just to keep it easy for the American audience, Final Fantasy III was the one. Now, I I loved Final Fantasy 2, and that's still my favorite one of all time, but Final Fantasy 3 was also super excellent, and different ways to play, and you can like, you know, squat up with different characters and all that too. Don't need to talk a lot about Final Fantasy 3, but boy oh boy is it awesome, and excellent soundtrack too. That's the one I wish they would remake. I mean, they're doing like the remake of like Final Fantasy 7, I get it, but man, do that, but with Final Fantasy 3 or Final Fantasy 6 and I think we'd be all over it. I just want to see the opera scene really and I want to have Mike support for the opera. N no choosing which words you got to say. I want you to be able to sing into your controller to pass the opera scene <laughs> in the remake. Let's make that happen. <laughs>
Earthworm Jim rolled around in 1994, and I was a big fan of Earthworm Jim. I loved the animation, loved the music, loved the uh, style, and loved the comedy of it, too. So funny, so, they actually turned it into a Saturday morning cartoon, which I have on DVD. I'm not, I don't need to show you, because it doesn't matter. Earthworm Jim <laughs> even had, like, toys and action figures and stuff like that, too. And the game itself was over the top, but I think just about the right amount of over the top. Like, if it was any more over the top, you saw a little bit of that with uh, Earthworm Jim 2. Not as much, but anything more, I'd be like, okay, now it's just ridiculous. Now it's too random, but I thought it was just a funny idea for a game, and I thought it played really well. I like the games where, and there's a few of those too, uh, Blackthorn, early in this list, was one of those games, as well as uh, Flashback, where like, when you shoot the gun, you don't actually see the bullet fly across the screen. It just, well, it's it goes so fast, you don't even see it, so you just do that and kill the enemies out. I don't know. It was fun. I liked it. Anyone else super disappointed when they rented Lord of the Rings? J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings uh, Volume 1. I wanted to mention Volume 1 because was there supposed to be a Volume 2? Man, I never beat this game and I played this game a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. And got very far in this game. But the farther you get, the more it doesn't seem like you're getting any further. <laughs> and this is before the movies came out. This is before the Lord of the Rings uh, films to make it super popular. But I was familiar with it. I had the book series. I still, my original book series is still, I, again, I can show you, it doesn't matter. I'll do a video sometime where I just show off all the stuff that I have, but I don't show in the videos because <laughs> to prove I actually have it, doesn't matter. It plays slow and sluggish and just doesn't really go anywhere. It, it looks like it could, and man, I wish it did, but it does not. That's too bad. Mickey Mania came out later in the year as well. More Disney. The animation on Mickey Mania is fantastic. I like the fact that you go through like the different eras of Mickey Mouse. I remember being just fascinated by the animation more than anything. But yeah, it was, it was really cool. R-Type 3 came about, and R-Type 3 should have been the one that launched with the system. Now we had Super R-Type. Super R-Type is great. But R-Type 3, to me, felt like more of a proper sequel to R-Type than Super R-Type, if that makes sense. But R-Type 3, love it. Now, have you actually played Shaq Fu? I know you t make fun of it all the time, but Shaq Fu came out in 1994, and it's not as bad of a game as you think it is. Now, it's not a great game. It's just not as bad of a game as you think it is. It's a fighting game for fun. It's funny, like, the idle animation, like, when you're on the ground, that animation, I think it looks really good. It's only when you're jumping that it turns into, like, three frames a second. It's like, why is it, why is it so choppy when you jump? That's weird. But then when you land, it looks great. I have no idea. Well, we got Sparkster. Now, on the Sega Genesis, they had Rocket Knight Adventures. And I was like, ah, that looks so good. But if you don't have a Genesis, you can't play it. Well, we got Sparkster. Great, great, great game. Especially if you love that, just that cartoony Konami-style action game. Sparkster is the one to play. And I haven't beaten it yet. Maybe that'll be one of my goals for, uh, for this year. We finally get Super Punch-Out. Now, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out was one of my favorite games on the NES, and it still is. And now Super Punch-Out finally rolls around for the Super Nintendo. I didn't think it was ever gonna happen, and I'm so glad it did, because it plays so wonderfully. And it plays a little bit more like the arcade game than like Mike Tyson's Punch-Out did, which is fine, but then they got Super Punch-Out, which is wonderful, and I love the characters in it. And some of the characters from Super Punch-Out, like Bear Hugger, are in this one, which is awesome, and I love it. And it's still a great game, and I've never beaten it. <laughs> In fact, most of the games on this list I've never beaten. <laughs> I've played a lot of them, though. Like The Lion King. I have beaten that one. I have beaten The Lion King. But this game, for being Disney, is much more difficult of a game than it deserves to be. And I'm not just talking about the double jumps in the second stage on this thing. This is a lot more difficult of a game than most give it credit for. I mean, I'm sure there are people who played this game as a kid, and they liked it so far, and they got to the second stage and didn't know what to do, and that's all they've ever seen of this game. And I do not blame them at all for that because it's it's rough <laughs> it really is i loved it i love the, uh, the the stampede scene like when you're running away from all that too i just thought it looked really cool we get donkey kong country kevin bayless you got david weiss on the soundtrack and not that it came out of nowhere but i was like oh interesting you're gonna make another donkey kong game another game featuring donkey kong well it's been a while and i think they did it right by doing this style of game to make it be like you know what they could have just made another donkey kong style game and you know, just have it been almost like shovelware. But they put a lot of time and effort into this, especially like when they scanned and digitized all that stuff to make it happen. Donkey Kong Country is, um, it's iconic today for all the right reasons. Balls 3D was just funny enough to rent. You wouldn't want to own it. And it shows up on a lot of those lists of like, here are the worst games of all time. I don't think it's that terrible of a game, but it was a fighting game and it was a 3D fighting game. Oh my goodness, a 3D fighting game on the Super Nintendo? Well, because everything's spheres, it doesn't matter which angle you're looking at, it's gonna look the same. They just kind of reposition them a little bit. It was okay. I mean, for a fighting game, it was fine. I don't think it was a one-star game or anything like that, but you know, it was a game that had balls written right on the right on the cover. So you could hold the game up from across the video store and maybe you're a friend looking at the new release section, you're in the video game section, you're like, hey, I got 
check out the you know the balls I have in my hand or you know whatever 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 again I, I was a junior in high school another game for the time 1994 Beavis and Butthead super awesome on MTV you gotta sell the video game right and they had the Genesis version I prefer the Genesis version more than the Super Nintendo version the Super Nintendo version was fine it was okay Demon's Crest oh my goodness I was a big fan of Gargoyles Quest for the Game Boy and then Gargoyles Quest 2 for NES and now we have Demon's Crest a game where you play as basically Firebrand is that his name something like that you kind of like play as the bad guy from Ghosts and Goblins and Demon's Crest was just cool and you can upgrade and you can get like different demons you can play as that have different abilities like one's better underwater one can fly farther or whatever whatever it was but Demon's Crest super super great game love love that style of game and I wish we'd have a new game like a, like a new Gargoyles Quest game that I'd, I'd love to see it and we also had Dragon View now Dragon View came out 1994 later in the year Draken was one of those games that came out for the Super Nintendo that I was fascinated by because like there was our Skyrim for the time where you could like you walk outside yeah it's actually like you know first person perspective walking through the fields and all that best you could do for Super Nintendo for the time but then the fighting was really weird now Dragon View changed that because Dragon View made the fighting a little bit more like Exile and I loved Exile for like the Sega Genesis so like when you actually go into a boss encounter then actually comes the time where you actually like can jump and use your sword and all that too so the best of both worlds Dragon View one of my favorite Super Nintendo games of all time Home Improvement came out for the Super Nintendo and not that I'm going to talk a whole lot about it because the game is not great but do yourself a favor just for fun Google what the instruction manual looks like it's something that would not fly by today's standards I don't think Nickelodeon Guts came out. Nickelodeon Guts was one of those shows that I watched on Nickelodeon. Was it Saturday mornings or whatever it was? I was just like, oh, this is fun. It came from a time when Nickelodeon was everything. The Nickelodeon Studios, it was the place you wanted to go. I never had a chance to go there. And then Guts, I think, was just one of those kind of just attractions that they had there and they grabbed kids and, you know, put them to the test and have them go through these little obstacle course things that, that were all safe and secure. And, you know, everyone was there to make sure that everyone had a good time. And I wanted to climb the Agra Crag and I wanted to, you know, have the trophy thing and, you know, wanted to say hi to Mo, the announcer in the referee shirt. She was, she was the reason I watched it. Oh, there, there was games involved too? Oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> Nickelodeon Guts came out for the Super Nintendo. It was it was worth a it was worth a rental. How about that? Pitfall the Mayan Adventure came out in 94. And Pitfall the Mayan Adventure, I remember, had a lot of hype behind it. It's like, oh my god, a new Pitfall game from Activision. And it's not very like Pitfall. Because I mean I like Pitfall for the Atari 2600, I played the holy bejesus out of that one. I loved me some Pitfall for the Atari 2600. Now they're kind of like, you know, rebranch and relaunch Pitfall as a new thing, which was fine, but then when they included the fact that you could play the original Pitfall, like if you go inside a secret door and then there's Pitfall, I was like, that's the reason I want to play it. Not even for the game, I just want to play the old Pitfall. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> we had Samurai Showdown, and Samurai Showdown, for a while there, to me, felt like the pinnacle Neo Geo fighting game. I mean, the other ones that they had, the World Heroes was a lot of fun. I loved me uh, Fatal Fury, great game there too. Art of Fighting was a personal favorite. But then when Samurai Showdown came out, that came like the best of the fighting games for the Neo Geo, and now available on the Super Nintendo. And I thought the Super Nintendo version played wonderfully. 1994, a great year for wrestling games because we had Natsume Championship Wrestling earlier in the year. We had Hammerlock Wrestling, which looks really cool. If you've ever played Hammerlock Wrestling, it's from Genichiro Tenryu's Wrestle and Romance, but it came out in the US as Hammerlock Wrestling. You have the wrestling in the middle, and then the other screens are like cinematic which carry it along. It's a pretty unique style of game. It might be worth checking out. I've talked about it a couple of times. But we also had WCW Super Brawl. And WCW Super Brawl features Tony Schiavone's voice. Very cool. It features a lot of the great WCW wrestlers for the time, like the Steiner Brothers, like Vader, Ric Flair, Sting. You even have like Ron Simmons. So many more too. And the game was a huge letdown. I had so high hopes for this game because I was like, I know the WWF games are worth playing, but they're not fantastic. And I was hoping for like a new style of wrestling game featuring the WCW brand, which I, I did watch. I was more into WWF than WCW at the time, but still I watched it and I thought it was a lot of fun. It's like the game itself, not great. But then to make up for it, we get WWF Raw. And WWF Raw, again, with that kind of over the topness, I played me a ton of Royal Rumble for the Super Nintendo. And this one has the Royal Rumble and it has new wrestlers for the time. You actually play as Luna Vachon, which is cool. Play as a woman wrestler, great. It also had these unique maneuvers you could do that you weren't typically supposed to do. <laughs> Like, almost like these super, like the super finishers and stuff like that. I remember like one, two, three kid would like go from turnbuckle and like jump from turnbuckle to turnbuckle and do something else like that. Or like doink the clown, like roll you up in a ball, then like field goal kick you. 
<laughs> stuff like that out of the ring. It was just ridiculous. I don't know. Uh, but WWF Rock came out, and I remember like, playing that pretty regularly. X-Men Mutant Apocalypse. Well, there is a next men game on the Sega Genesis, which to me was like pinnacle X-Men game. And X-Men Mutant Apocalypse was pretty good for the Super Nintendo. You, you, you know, the fact that you could play as Beast. Beast was always my favorite guy. And he also plays Gambit, whoever else was in there too. Cool game, great game. Wish it played a little bit more like the Genesis version, but um, there was an X-Men game that came out during that time, especially because the X-Men animated series was so good. I wish we would have just had X-Men the animated series, the video game. But I think they just said, hey, you know what? Well, X-Men, X-Men seems pretty popular. Let's do an X-Men game, and I'm glad they did. Rise of the Robots, you rented this? I'm sorry. Just in time for Christmas, then we had a couple of combo packages. Like there was the Super Mario Brothers All-Stars with Super Mario World, which was interesting because Mario World was the pack-in. So I thought they would just include that with that, but cool, okay. And they also had Tetris and Dr. Mario. You get Tetris and you get Dr. Mario. So I mean, great for leading into Christmas if you're just like, oh, here's two games in one. Not gonna complain about that. I remember seeing Uniracers, and I remember seeing a bit of hype behind Uniracers as well. Great racing game, they haven't really done anything with it since then. I was hoping that we'd see another Uniracers game by now. You play as a unicycle, basically, and you have to like do these stunts and tricks and go around the circle -y things and go through the race and all that too. It was a pretty interesting idea for a game for the time. We also had Wario's Woods, which is another puzzle-style game. Wario's Woods was the final NES game. But hey, if you're already into Super Nintendo, here's Wario's Woods, where you play as Toad. Wario is dropping these things, you just gotta, you know, match them up with the bombs and everything to clear off the stages. I liked it okay. And 1994 was also the year where they released, it's not exactly a Super Nintendo game, but they released the Super Game Boy Adapter. So it gives you a chance to play all these great Game Boy games that we've had since 1989 now on your television, which blew my mind. I was like, this is the best way to do it because at the time I had a Game Boy, I liked it, but I could only play these kind of simple puzzle games because if I was playing like an action game where there's like a lot of running and jumping and all that, the tracers, the ghosting, for me, it wasn't a great experience, but now I can play it on my television. And sometimes Game Boy games are equipped with like, you know, full color and everything. It opened up a whole library of like five years worth of video games for me to go back and check out for the Game Boy. So good news for me there for sure. So Super Game Boy, one of the best ideas of video game inventions ever, probably. <laughs> At least as far as I'm concerned. And there were so many other games that came out in 1994. Could, could have went on this video for like, you know, five or six hours talking about every single game. But we'll call that good for now. 1995 also had a ton of great games. Some of the best games that people remember in 1995. Um, that video will be coming out here pretty cool, uh, pretty cool, pretty soon anyway. But I've done this video uh, since the birth of the Super Nintendo all the way up to now. Check out those other videos and we'll see you soon.